the priorities, the concerns, the agenda you want us to address, God willing, when we form. I want us to agree, and I want you, when you go to vote, I want you to vote for an agenda and a plan, right? It is the only and surest way when you vote for an agenda and a plan that you can participate in moving your country forward. Uh, so th that, that is the frame of this engagement. I have listened very carefully to the issues you have raised. They have been documented by uh, uh, Dr. Asienga is there and uh, Dr. Machuka is here, Machuki is here, and uh, the good man uh, Pokea, who was uh, an economist at the Central Bank of Kenya. So we have a robust team of people who are harnessing and synthesizing what you're saying. And it doesn't matter the language you're using. It doesn't matter the, the, whether it is in Dulu or broken Kiswahili. We will get it fashioned into a proper economic plan for, for us. <clears throat> It is true that we have a serious issue on sugar in this sugar belt. And we need to sort out the sugar issues, the sugarcane issues in this region. It is true that we have a deficit of between 400 and 500 metric tons yearly that we have to import. It is also true that our farmers are not being treated well. We have arrears due to farmers. We have challenges of the infrastructure of roads, as has been said here. We have challenges of the condition of the factories that we are running, especially the government-owned ones. We've been working on a privatization program for the last 15 years, and we haven't quite gotten where we want. And I agree with the person who said here, there is a problem of goodwill. There is no sufficient political goodwill to sort out this issue. Let me give you some statistics on, on that subject. Um, in terms of acreage, we do and, and let me take for example, let me give you two examples. Central province, we do the same acreage on tea as we do in this belt on sugarcane. We, however, earn 120 billion Kenya shillings from tea on the same acreage, we earn 18 billion shillings on sugarcane every year. Do you understand what I'm saying? The same acreage from tea, we earn 120 billion. The same acreage on sugarcane, we earn 18 billion shillings. Six times different. Are we together? So we need to have a candid discussion. We need to have a candid discussion on what is it that we need to do to our sugar or sugarcane so that the farming community engaged in sugarcane can earn relatively or as close as possible to the farmers who grow tea or other crops. Are we together? There will be a candid discussion on the opportunity and opportunity costs that we need to do. I have had a discussion with the economic players in, uh, in this industry, either in the process of privatization 
we must find a way of making sure that the cost of production of our uh, one ton of, 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 uh, of sugar, of sugar, the world average is 250 uh, shillings per ton. We are doing 800 US dollars per ton. So we need to have a kind of discussion. And it is the duty of all of us to see what improvements can we make? What investments can we make? Is it the condition of the factories? Is it the variety of the sugarcane we are growing? Because uh, our research went down when we got rid of uh, the various uh, uh, sector um, sugarcane, the sugarcane uh, facility that was in charge of research and the rest of it. So we need to have a kind of discussion. Otherwise, we are letting down our farmers. Too many people are working too hard and earning very little. We are actually wasting their effort. We have to candidly address ourselves to that. Um, I think uh, the issue that have been said about um, the, the, the shifting of the headquarters to Kisumu, that's positive, but that's not the solution. We, we really need to think deeply and critically on what needs to be done. And some very uh, uh, candid discussion and, and courageous decisions have to be made uh, the, the details was given to us by Mr. Omolo, Mr. Joseph Omolo, very good details. I value the input that uh, Mr. Omolo has, uh, uh, has put in this. And um, we will shortly be speaking to you with um, our economic team so that we can get some details on uh, the proposal that you are making as people from this region. Um, the other subject that was uh, aptly put across is the subject that was done by Justice Omoni. Again, on that, uh, we are collecting close to 400 billion shillings every year from our diaspora uh, remittances. We need to channel those resources properly. I have, on the 3rd of December, I will be hosting a diaspora conference with people from the US, Europe, Asia, to have a candid discussion on this subject of uh, diaspora remittances, because they too are concerned about how they can input into the development of our, of our country. Jago Bokambo Chairman and Bernard Saiji, uh, they have talked about the whole border border industry. They have asked me whether I have come with some border border things have seen me doing things elsewhere, whether I've come with some wheelbarrows or I don't know, I've come with something. <laughs> I want to tell Bernard and uh, Jacob that uh, I have come. Yeah, I have come. <laughs> Maybe I, not, I may not do everything that you want me to do, but I am here. I am here. So, and uh, I agree with the, the Boda Boda industry that um, they, 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 the credit facilities they are, they are getting are punitive. You know? Um, a a Boda Boda that is being sold, as he said, for 145000 if you buy it on credit, within a year, 
you end up paying almost 300,000, also almost double what, what you, you are meant to pay. That is what I am speaking to when I talk about bottom-up. These are the enterprises that require alternative sources of financing. They need to get alternative sources of credit. It is the same thing uh, Maria Cheng was saying, that uh, they have no way of borrowing money. There's a Maasai guy. Maasai hapo sijui. Anakopesha watu pesa. And I, I'm sure that Maasai guy is a Shylock. So, and you know, a Shylock, when he lends you money, you pay between 5 and 10% per day. And there is no business. It doesn't matter what business you're doing. And that's, that's the, 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 the thing I've been speaking to, that we have predatory lenders, lenders who are destroying enterprises. Because anybody charging 5% or 10% or even the Fuliza that is charging 6% per day, those are predatory lenders. You can never do any business as long as you have those kind of lenders. And that is what is destroying the whole uh, micro and small enterprise uh, industry. And of course, the challenges of uh, lending and, uh, and, and that kind of thing. My good friend Ayim has uh, spoken very well about how we can privatize extension services. I quite agree that uh, if we have a problem with measuring, you know, what government is doing in terms of um, uh, uh, industry, in, in terms of extension service, we can privatize and we can, we can pay uh, uh, the professionals on the basis of how much, how many farmers they have served and the output they have made by, by, by serving those farmers. So I, I quite agree that we need to have a discussion between the county, the national government, so that we can come up with the right policy that will um, streamline and give us uh, the best way of how to deal with it. Caroline uh, Odera talked to us about the huge potential we have in the lake here. People should not be going from Kisumu to Mombasa. We should actually develop the lake infrastructure for tourism, including to have a proper beach here, uh, proper hotel uh, services and a better use of the lake as a tourist uh, facility than we currently are doing. And, and I agree with you that there is a lot of potential in that space. And I agree also with her that um, investment must not necessarily be from foreigners. You know, we can get the local people and arrange finance for them to invest in improving the facilities around here. There is the whole problem of demolitions, which is an evil thing. You know, that government wakes up one morning and brings down people's businesses. I mean, it, it can never be right that uh, a whole industry is brought down without people being given some alternative. I mean, it's the duty of government, if you are in a certain facility, they should be able to provide resources for you to relocate to another place. Not that to wake up one morning and come and bring down your business. You have children, you have, uh, you have workers whom you pay. It cannot just be one morning, they are jobless, you are destitute, and it is supposed to be okay. It is not okay, right? It is not okay, you know? And we have said that uh, there must be law on how to relocate people going into the future. It must be structured in law. 
It cannot be the person who can hire the policeman is the person who will demolish your, 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 your dwelling. There must be law. Finally, um, we have had a discussion on uh, uh, Mr. Felix Minda of uh, Kenya National Chamber of Commerce has talked about uh, the tax regime. It is true, you know, we have a problem with the taxes in Kenya. And it is even a, we have even a bigger problem in the way we, we treat our taxpayers. It is not right that a taxpayer, you send a contingent of police to go and harass a taxpayer. It is not right. In fact, I saw one judge, I don't know whether anybody saw here, one judge about two weeks ago or a week ago said KRA must not kill taxpayers because if they engage in killing taxpayers, they themselves will die because they will kill everybody and then finally there will be, there will be no tax paid. So the strategy though, on how to make tax and the tax regime non-punitive is to engage in an exercise that expands the number of taxpayers. The problem with our current tax regime is that there are too few people who are paying tax. The majority are not paying tax and it is not their fault. It's because Either they are, not, they are not working, they have no business, so they cannot pay nothing. And it is our duty to get as many people as possible working and as many people as possible doing business by making sure that they have a place to do business, by making sure that there is the correct plan on what to do, and lastly, by making sure that there is credit for them to grow their businesses so that we can grow more taxpayers and then be able to lower taxes. I see my competitors, they are talking about lowering taxes without thinking of how to grow the tax base. You cannot lower taxes because there is no free lunch. You have to, if you are lowering taxes, somebody else must pay it. So we must first extend, expand the tax base, get more people to pay tax so that the few who are paying high taxes, we can reduce the taxes. I just thought I should respond to um, uh, the issues that you have raised here. Okebe, the good farmer, Mr. Sylvester, has spoken to our hearts. He says the brokers went away with their, with their um, uh, ochele, <laughs> and they have never been seen. <laughs> That's what he said, right? And the, and the pests and birds ate the, the balance. So, and we, they, they are still using oxen, you know? I know for sure that we have a two billion facility for mechanization, which we, we can tap into. It is delayed because of useless bureaucracy in government. Uh, and I want to tell Okebe that um, we have a deficit of close to 600 metric tons of rice we import. Surely we can grow that, that rice locally. The same way Mary Ocheng said, we are importing potatoes from, and tomatoes from uh, Uganda. We are importing, I don't know, something else from Tanzania. When we can grow it? Actually, if you look at the total import of food items to Kenya, is actually 180 billion Kenya shillings every year. That, 150, that 180 billion shilling gap is actually a market our farmers can grow into. We should be able to facilitate our farmers to grow that 180 billion worth of food that we are currently importing. Uh, 
And I want to say that the region that has the highest potential, I want you to listen to me, the region that has the highest potential of growing what we are importing at the moment is Western and Nyanza. That is the region that has the highest potential of importing the oil crops, the um, chile, uh, sugar, that, 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 that whole space, this region can actually be the region that can grow for us what we can use to close the gap of imports of close to 180 billion Kenya shillings. Finally, um, John Ching, my good friend, uh, speaking on behalf of people who are able differently, has spoken very well about uh, uh, inclusion, and I, and I agree with him that inclusion is a, is a serious challenge. We must continuously assess our performance when it comes to including people with disability in the whole uh, space of taking the country forward. This morning, for example, we made a decision that all the people who are running for whatever office in UDA, any person with disability running in UDA will run for free. There will be no nomination fees. I am sure we will be pushing the bounds. We will be pushing the boundaries to make sure that people with disability, they, they are included in the management of our country. Uh, we will continue to have that discussion, my good friend Ochieng. Um, I know you have asked me to make a sponsorship of uh, your engagement on behalf of people with disability in Tanzania. And I have told my office to organize so that we can sponsor you. I have been told uh, it's going to cost uh, around 150,000. I will ask uh, Masera there to arrange 150,000 so that we give it to Mr. Ochien. He can go and attend the he can go and attend the conference and give us some feedback. Right? So I think uh, I just thought I should respond to those issues before I finally make my final statement. And my final statement is as follows. I have told you that uh, governance and politics and management of the country is too important to be left to politicians alone. Every patriotic citizen must step forward, yeah, must step forward to participate because it is our country and whatever happens affects all of us. Are we together? I have three things that I want to speak to you about. I want to first speak to this bottom-up economic model. I know many people are, uh, my competitors especially, they are struggling with this bottom-up thing because they are not used to us having economic, an economic discussion. But we have forced them. The people of Kenya have forced the politicians to engage on matters economy. It is no longer enough to have a discussion about which position and which position and which uh, place and the usual theatrics of politics. P politicians today and my competitors today have been forced, each one of them, to have a discussion on the economy. And I am a very proud Kenyan that we are having a conversation about the economy of our nation. One of my competitors is talking about uh, Uchumi Maradufu. That's very good. Another competitor of mine is talking about uh, uh, giving people some handouts. That's very good. 
another uh, competitor of mine is speaking about uh, some other story. So long as we are discussing the economy, let us continue with the discussion. So, what is bottom up? I want you to listen to me very carefully because we are having a discussion of our lifetime. When we took over with the President Uhuru Kenyatta in 2013, I want to give you a bit of background. We decided that we are going to build politics on a different platform and we are going to have a new foundation. And the foundation was non-ethnic, non-regional. We must avoid hate, ethnicity, and division, right? So in our first term, we decided that we are going to do the railway. We did 700 kilometers of the railway. We decided that we are going to do roads infrastructure. We have done so far 10,000 kilometers of tarmac, new tarmac in Kenya. We decided that we are going to roll out generation and uh, distribution of electricity. I am very happy to say that today we have raised the number of households connected to electricity from 2 million to 8.5 million today. And in particularly in Kisumu, the number of people connected to electricity in 2013 was 42,000. 42,000 people connected to electricity in 2013. Today, we have 242,000 people connected to electricity in Kisumu. Are we together? Yes. Yes. 2014, 2013, what was the estimate? What was the electricity. We have connected 200,000 more people to electricity in Kisumu than were collected in 50 years. Are we together? The facts are very stubborn. They never lie, right? So you can go check the statistics. Number three, we decided also that we were going to expand and re-engineer education. That's why you have 100% uh, uh, transition. You have the free secondary, which has challenges, but we are streamlining it. And we also said we must move our education more to Tibet. Today, when we took over, we had two technical colleges in Kisumu. Today, we have five. We have built one in Yakach, we have built one in Nyando, and we have built one in one of the other constituencies, uh, Seme, here in Seme. We have built three new technical training colleges in this Kisumu. We had Riyadh and we had Kisumu National Polytechnic. Those were the two that were there. And we have built 180 new technical training colleges in the whole country because we want to engineer education. Are we together? So, in our second term, we had decided that we have laid the foundation and we now need to grow enterprise, create jobs, and expand farming. That's why we came up with the Big Four plan. The Big Four plan had three major issues. Number one was to create jobs using our housing, value addition, agro-processing, manufacturing plan. Um, expand and, 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 and invest in farming on our food security pillar and also deal with matters of health on our universal health coverage pillar. As you all know, uh, that plan has not gone as well as we wanted because we got busy. Tulipata kazi mingi. Ya BBI, na reggae, na nini, sasa hapo. Ika melea. So, <laughs> no, that's the truth. 
So tulipata wakati tulikuwa wengi, unajua tulikuwa na marafiki sasa walikuwa wengi. Wakakuja wakasema hii priority ya mambo ya kazi ngoja ingoje, hii priority nyingine ya mambo ya kilimo wacha ingoje, hii priority nyingine ya universal health coverage wacha ingoje, wacha kwanza tutengeneze katiba. So tukaenda kutengeneza katiba. And I want to tell you standing here that BBI thing was the most fraudulent deceitful agenda ever carried out again in the name of changing the constitution ukora no i'm telling you the truth yani ukora ile ya mwisho you know unajua kenya hii ni mzuri tuambia tuse tuambiane ukweli because while the public wanaambiwa oh unajua tunapitisha BBI ndio tuongeze pesa ya kwenda kwa county surely you don't need to change the constitution to get more money to go to the counties the constitution says not less than 15000 what not less than 15%. What other English do you need? If it says not less than 15%, it means you can do even 100% of the money to go to the country. Why do you have to bother the country to change the constitution? It's a lot of nonsense. Aman Amagani, my friends. Haya. You know? You know? Oh, you see, you help loans. Oh, it will help, help, help loans. You don't need to change the law. You don't need to change the constitution. You don't need to change the regulation. With a simple letter, barua, barua tu, na signature chapo chini. E help loan can be changed to a grant. You don't have to change the constitution. So anybody telling you that we change the constitution so that help can become a grant is a con man. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's good to be to ambiane ukweli. Hiyo ni hiyo ni utapeli. Mbona hatutaki kusema ukweli? The real the real issue with BBI which nobody wants to tell the country and even the people who are proposers of this BBI they are ashamed of it. They wanted to change the constitution to install an imperial presidency listen to me they wanted to install an imperial presidency and then you ask yourself so why did we fight moi all the years why did we fight the old constitution that had an imperial president why because let me ask you if you say you want to give the president power to appoint members of parliament as ministers right you want to give the president power to appoint an ombudsman to go and supervise the judiciary what have you said you have said the president now has power over the executive the president has power over the legislature because he can manipulate the legislature using the ministers and he can appoint 50 100 of them and the president has power over the judiciary because he can use the ombudsman to manage the judiciary and whatever decisions they want to make see we have installed uh, a, a, an imperial president did any kenyan here say to end to ongeze powers your president no so this is fraud and none of these people are, are telling us that's why when i tried to tell them in bombers what can you makelele oh sijui eh sijui kama tunaelewana tuko pamoja yes this is this is it bona to bona why don't we want to tell each other the truth he deceit ya siasa ya kenya 
for how long are we going to have this thing? Bwana tu siambiane ukweli. Eh, tunaelewana. So and the more the the the, the the even more dangerous thing in BBI was BBI was being changed against the constitution, unconstitutionally. The moment you allow changing the constitution unconstitutionally, you have licensed impunity in Kenya. It means the next person with power, influence, and money can come and change the constitution the way they want. We cannot have a country like that. That is too dangerous for us as a nation. So you come at Nailwana. Because Ukisema Kwasababu kuna wezo na pesa na na influence una petitia kwa county assembly, una petitia everywhere. Lakini Mungu anapenda Kenya sana. I'm telling you. Because wali petitia everywhere. Lakini iliishia kwa null and void. Hiyo story yote iliishia pale kwa null and void. Walikuwa wanatuimbia hapa. Oh nobody can stop reggae. Oh nobody can stop reggae. Reggae. Sasa reggae silikwama. <laughs> no apana. You know let me tell you guys eh. We can we can we can disagree on anything eh? But we must tell each other the truth. Tunaelewana? So hiyo sarakasi yote wasted 4 years of our time. Where four years were wasted in, in, a, in, a, in a useless engagement, a fraudulent exercise. You know, they, yeah, clearly, they need to You know, this wasted our time, they wasted money they, on, on an exercise that was clearly fraudulent and did not have the interests of the people at heart. And that's why Ilya Bunjika. So, We had planned under the big four agenda. Number one, to make sure that we deal with the most present challenge in Kenya. And the most present challenge in Kenya is unemployment. That is why we had housing, manufacturing, agro-processing, value addition in the big four. And that's what I am saying. God willing, next year, the first agenda, the first priority, the first budget, we will commit, as we had planned in the big four, we will commit the first 100 billion Kenya shillings in programs and projects that will create jobs for our young people. <laughs> No, it is possible, right? So, and I dare say, anybody who tells us today that the priority is to change the constitution so that we can create the position of prime minister, deputy prime minister, assistant prime minister, vice prime minister, I don't know what. For leaders like myself, and yet millions of our own children we have taken to school, they have certificates, they have degrees, they have diplomas, are languishing. Many of them, they have gotten into drugs. Many of them have gotten into crime. Many of them are into depression. And then you want to tell me, in that circumstance, the priority is to create jobs for leaders. It is stupidity. Ujinga. No, honestly, Ujinga. Unawezaje kusema ati priority in this scenario where we have, we have four million young people, our children, we have taken them to school. We have paid their school fees. They have certificates, diplomas, and degrees. And you want to tell me it is not a priority to sort out their issues 
that it is a priority to go and change the constitution so that we can create positions for ourselves as leaders, that is stupidity. It cannot be anything else. Sijui kama tunaelewana, my friends. Na hii ujinga lazima tuondoe kwa Kenya. Hii ujinga hii lazima tuondoe kwa Kenya. Tunaelewana? We must get rid of this thing, my friends. Sawa? So, that it's not possible. It's not possible how? Si tumejenga 10,000 kilometers of the road, tamak. Si tumejenga really 700 kilometers. Si tumeunganisha stima imefika watu milioni nane. What is so difficult about making sure that these young people have a job or are engaged meaningfully? And when I say have a job, I don't mean just have a pay slip. I mean everybody has an income. They are working somewhere and they are earning something. And they can, they can stand for themselves and they can fend for their families and they can put food on the table for their families. Number two, bottom up. Bottom in answer na hawa vijana hawa. Hawa. Hawa wenye wana kazi hawa. Tunaelewana? Why do we need so much security? to do anything. Why do we need all this security? It's because these guys have nothing to do. We must get them, we must get them something to do. It is not their fault. It is not their fault that they are jobless. It is because there is nowhere to work. It is our duty to create the space and the projects and the programs to engage them in work. Tunaelewana, my friends. And this thing has no tribe. The same way you have so many young people here is the same way you have so many people in Eldoret. It's the same way you have so many people in Kisumu, in Nairobi, in Nyeri, in Mombasa. It's everywhere. So nobody should tell you it is this community versus that community. It is not. Sawa, sawa. Number two, we must create the environment. And many of you have spoken to it. We must create the environment for us to do business. 80% of business is carried out in the micro, small, and medium enterprise. Iyo micro, small, and medium enterprise ni mambo mingi. Lakini, micro ni hii mamamboga tu uyu meri ya chenga. Nekwa nasema hapa. Iyo ndio micro. One, we must create the space for them to do business. If it is a market, it must be properly done. If it is so that we can create the environment, and we are, we are talking about the environment in general. If it is a market for the traders, it will be equipment for the fishermen, it will be the cold rooms, it will be the meals for, the, for, the, for, the, for Mr. Okebe and his uh, team. Make sure they have correct storage, make sure they have the correct milling, so that we create an environment for them to thrive. Number two, we must have the law to protect everybody's business so that other people's businesses are not criminalized. And number three, which is most important, we must create the financial ecosystem for these people to access credit that is affordable. Leo, Munazikia Mama Acheng Anasema, Akienda Kukopa Pesa inamshinda kulipa kwa sababu gani ule masai analipisha 10% per day kama angepata mahali ya kukopa at 5% per year she would do her business very well sawa sawa huyu mtu yangu ya boda boda hapa anasema pikipiki yenye is supposed to go 145 he ends up paying 290 because of the credit facility he is getting. So we must make it possible. And this is what I am saying. I want you to listen to me carefully. I am saying the same way we have CDF. So you have CDF? You have CDF? You have shule na kulipa mambo ya basari. Next year, apart from CDF, 150 million ya kulipa ya kujenga mashule na kulipa basari next year 
tunaweka another 150 million kila constituency kila mwaka ya ku support hizi enterprises ya mama mboga na hawa watu wengine hawa wote local enterprises nyi mnanielewa it is not free money but it is credit that will assist these people access money at 2 3 4 5% per year which they can use to grow their businesses huyu mtu wa boda boda kama pikipiki ni 145000 he must not pay more than 160 even if he is getting it on credit per year tunaelewana so instead of us charging him uh, all the way to 280 that 280 is almost 130000 shillings that will be credited to his account so and we need to make mutu asiwadangaye Unajua hii story yote watu kwa sababu hawataki kusema ukweli wanakuja na Kiingereza mingi and make the problem look so difficult. These problems are very simple. We can sort them out simply. Mtu asiwaambia that you need rocket science, you need nini. Hapana, we will sort them out. They are very simple issues that we need to do to sort out our country. Tunaelewana? And number 3, we must invest in agriculture. Like um, Mzee Sylvester said there, we must put money in agriculture, we must put money in seeds, we must put money in a dam. He says uh, the dam is, uh, the, the, the floods are destroying, so we need just to contain that water. You are aware where we did in Bunyala here, we invested 6 billion shillings to control the floods, and we are going to have another 10,000 acres of crop. Of, uh, of, of, of rice if that project is complete. We should do the same here in Kisumu, make sure that we uh, control the floods, do a proper dam. Hopefully we should be able to do the dam in Koru uh, shortly so that we can control the floods and, and have more uh, access to water that we can use for irrigation and to be able to double the productivity of our farmers. And it goes on for all the other sectors. We must remove the brokers. What we must do in agriculture is put money in supporting the farmers, seeds, fertilizer, water, extension service, as has been said here. We will increase their productivity. Where they are producing one ton, they can produce three tons which means they earn more money. And when they produce three tons, where they are currently producing one ton, we should be able to take the uh, food to the market at a cheaper price. We will begin the process of reducing the cost of living. Every opinion poll that is done in Kenya, problem number one, every Kenyan is complaining, is the cost of living. Because 52% of everybody's earning is spent on food. If we can re reduce it to 30%, we will have more money in everybody's pocket. Are we together? And that cannot happen unless we support uh, the farmers. So this is the plan. Bottom up starts with creating jobs for these young people, supporting our mamamboga, border border, micro, small, medium enterprise uh, people, supporting our farmers, making sure that we reduce the cost of living. It is the process of growing everybody from, from the bottom. And that is the plan that I am suggesting to you. Are we together? We will, of course, sort out NHIF, and we will begin the process of doing, uh, changing our savings culture. Those ones I don't want to explain now, because we will continue this engagement. So, mimi nimekuja hapa kuuliza nyinyi watu wa Kisumu Dala. Tunaelewana? Eh, nataka nyinyi tuelewane tukubaliane na nyinyi. Mimi nataka niwaulize nyinyi. Nyinyi mnaniambia ati priority. Nikubadilisha katiba. Ati tutengeneze sijui prime minister. 
na assistant prime minister, na deputy prime minister, na vice prime minister. Hiyo ndiyo priority mnasema tufanye? Priority mimi ninasema priority ni agenda number one. Hawa vijana, the millions of young people who today are all over the place with certificates, degrees and diplomas. That must be our first priority. Tunaelewana? First priority. And, and let nobody tell you that uh, what William Ruto is saying is not practical. For your information, I am the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya as I speak to you. I am not a madman and I am not stupid. I know what I'm saying. Are we, are we, are we together? Eh? Monataka kuniambia, monataka kuniambia. Niambia, tumejenga reli, tumejenga hii barabara almost 10,000 kilometers, tumeunganisha stima watu milioni nane, alafu hii kazi kidogo hii ya kutafutia hawa vijara kasi ndiyo itakuwa kazi ngumu kuliko ya kujenga reli. Hapana. No. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? And we have identified with professionals and technocrats nationally and internationally before we fashion the big four on the areas that we need to invest that will give us the jobs we are looking for. And it must be deliberate. You know, we cannot just say we are going to grow the economy, the jobs are going to come. No, we must be deliberate about which areas are we investing so that we can create the jobs. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I am asking you to vote for the plan. The plan is, the plan is, number one, we must create the jobs and the opportunities for work for the millions of our young people as a priority. We must invest public resources in ensuring that every small enterprise has the resources the environment for them to do their business and the legal regime that protects their business as we provide the financial infrastructure for them to access credit that is not from predatory lenders. Wana Philip. Yes? Yeah. We must get rid of this predatory lenders because they are destroying our enterprises. They, they, ni, ni watu kupe, you know? They, they, wananyonya damu ya watu. So we must get rid of them. So, and finally, we must do what is right. Lastly, good people, for us to achieve this, we must be united. Mm. We must work together. Unity is very important. Unity is very important. Today, as I speak to you here, the Hustlers Party called UDA, right? Sindio? The Hustlers Party called UDA, we have 150 five members of parliament. Right? right? Majority of us came from Jubilee. Some of us came from ODM. Others came from Ford Kenya. Others came from Kanu. We are 155 members of parliament. Right? And I'm standing before you, the people of this Kisumu and Nyanza, that I want us to form the next government together. Mm. Are we together? Na nimekuja mchana mapema. Ndiyo tukubaliane. Tuunde hii serikali pamoja. Sawa sawa. Mimi nataka niwafanyie hesabu kidogo. UDA iko na wabunge 155 as we talk. We are followed by ODM with 70 MPs. We are followed by ile chama ya Kalonzo inaitwa nini? Na wabunge ishirini. Na ile wewe kwa hesabu yako. Na haitaji hesabu mingi, haitaji calculator. 
wewe kwa maoni yako chama gani ndio itaunda serikali next year <laughs> so na, na mimi i have no quarrel with anybody mimi nataka hawa tunashindana na wao wakuje watuambie na wawaeleze how how kubadilisha katiba itasaidia hawa vijana how, how? you know hii Kenya i don't know what you are going to do tuko na shida kubwa sana kwa sababu wale wangekuwa ndio viongozi wanakuwa conmen you know wanakuwa wana, wanasema things that are not there that are unrealistic and everybody is following sio kama tunaelewana mimi naomba nyinyi that's why i have come here i have come and i have said why i am having this engagement in a, in, a, in an environment like this is as reasonable people i want us to agree on a plan and on this plan i have said we must have the input of the ordinary people so that this plan is owned from the bottom going up and that's why we are having this engagement are we together hakuna mtu tumetukana hapa hakuna mtu tumezungumza mambo yake tumeongea vile tunaweza kupeleka taifa letu mbele as reasonable kenya are we together the input you have uh, given here the input mume mumechangia katika hiyo plan and i know we are running short of time the input we have, you, have, you have put in that plan i have this uh, professionals here they will put it into our plan and i am prepared it is you want so that, that next year as you go to vote as you go to vote you are voting knowing very well what your government will do beginning day one. Hmm? sitaki 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 mupige kura without knowing what you are voting for ama namna gani na mi nataka niwaambie tafadhali politics is about interests it is not about your relative your friend or the person you love it's about interest are we, are we together you vote for your interest and that's why i am saying to watch siasa hii ya ya kelele mingi mtu anakuja eh 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 ria eh namna hii alafu unapiga kura mwisho nothing doing hapana 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 no 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 that ria thing sijui tibi must stop you know hapana Haiwezi kuwa namna hiyo. People must know hii tunapiga kura ni nini. Sijui kama tunaelewana watu wa Kizomo Dala. Si tunapiga kura so that we are we vote intelligently. We know what we are voting for, we have a plan and all the other candidates should come and tell you their plan. Mtu asikuje tu na kelele ama namna gani? Tumeelewana? Bas. Eh, yes, uko iko swali. Swalisha. Uko na mtu hapo na swali. Mmm. jana mako hapa. Hapo endelea tu, ina iko sawa. Halo? Tumekubali kufuata wewe baba. Na hiyo ndiyo sababu sisi wajaluo tuko hapa. Na wewe pia utiwaidi wajaluo mimi mkinipea mtu kama Ereja Sembocha. Eh? Mtu kama Walo amekupigania usiku mchana kuna mvua kuna jua utampea nini kwa niaba ya wajaluo? Sisi <coughs> 
UDA UDA kwa sababu baba umejua sisi wajaluo tulikuwa katika nyororo ya ODM na sasa tumeamua kukufuata kama kijana wetu suja ambaye anataka kutoa pesa mahali kuongeza kwa mfuku wetu wewe pia bwana lazima tuambie wajaluo nimekuja hapa bwana niko na kijana yenu walo hapa niko na nani hapa nitampea kitu fulani na tena nauliza nimesikia safari yako imekuja Kisumu inaenda Omabei je siaya huko kwetu sisi tumetoka siaya utakuja lini sasa sisi tuko hapa vijana na mzee komanda kutoka siaya tulikuja kwa sababu ya wewe mimi ni candidate tukule huyo north kwa pati yako tuko na MP hapa pia ya Rareda constituency tuko na MC hapa pia ya Uka Lego tumetoka huko kote baba kwa sababu ya wewe ukirudi Nairobi utufikirie asante sana hii serikali my good brother your your question is very good hii serikali tunaunda ni serikali ya wa Kenya wote na we will agree we will sit down and agree and form an inclusive government the most important the most important thing is the plan we have and owalo has been part of the development of that plan with many other professionals like uh, Ojuang here like Machuki here they've been part of this development of this plan and they will have a role to play in the implementation of that plan tunaelewana my friend lakini ya muhimu you know ya muhimu ni kwamba inatubidi tuungane na tushirikiane sawa sawa kwa hivyo nikisema Arambe tunasema UDA ama Arambe bado haijasikika Arambe Unajua wale watu tunashindana na wao wako na kiburi mingi hawasikii sauti ya jini Arambe Eh sasa wamesikia Arambe 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 Nikisema UDA tunasema kazi ni kazi UDA 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 Ero kamano Asante sana na mimi nawapenda sana just relax Mimi nataka niseme asante kesho tutakuwa hapa eh, Kisumu dala eh, eh, wale niko hapa na wabunge Niko na mbunge anaitwa eh, Oscar Sudi pigeni makofi Niko na mbunge anaitwa ni mbunge nusu nusu hajafika bunge lakini anahangaika hapa katikati na hawa wadosi wengine wote we are members of one team na wale mahasla wengine wako hapo watu wadosi wadosi nimeshukuru sana so mimi nataka niseme asanteni sana kwa kunisikiza